Welcome to the show! <laughs> this guy got a mistletoe belt on! Gosh, that is bad. The whole plane smells like weed. Those were the days. It's a joke, you idiot! Looked in the mirror, I'm like, <laughs> Good old innocent fun. That table's a touch taller. That's what it is. It's dude. a tight dude. It's like a half inch Damn, tall. You give yourself the table where you feel tall. That's such a you move. No, dude. dude. Yes, it is. To be like, let me. I'll feel tall, dude. I usually sit right there, but this is my good angle, you know. <laughs> so when Ray is not here, this is how we do it. I would say, hey, welcome back, everybody, to Troublemakers, the podcast where each week we bring on a guest and they tell crazy stories about their lives. I'm your host, Dylan Krasinski, and with me today, not as always, as a fill-in because Ray's on the road. He's out of town still, out of town last week. Also, this episode's coming out about 12 hours late because, you know, snafus. Uh, Ray's in New Orleans eating fucking, what are those called? Beignets. Beignets at Cafe Du Monde and nice. uh, posting a lot of pictures, drinking cocktails. Oh, uh, this is great. But with me today, filling in our good buddy, Former guest on the pod, Luke Tuma, everybody. Hey. Ah. Uh, yeah, I usually sit there, but now when it's just two people, it's a nice little... You like uh, to sit there. Hey, a little lower. The last time I did this, you fucking... You fucked me. Why? With the love handle angle. <laughs> dude, he, like, this, the regular dude. camera didn't work, and the second camera was like <laughs> behind me, up on my love handles. I was like really carrying some pandemic weight. Dude. I, dude, I look like Brendan Fraser in The Whale. I mean, I looked... <laughs> I look like James Yandolfini, dude. I look ridiculous. I couldn't believe how fat I was. I will say, you know what the fat seat is at this table? Which one? The one next to you. This is the fat seat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who usually sits here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'm not going to lie. It's so funny because me and Ray, Ray used to sit there and then I would sit in the fat seat and I was like, <laughs> I, I we're doing these episodes. I'm editing them and I'm like, I, listen, man, I know I'm gaining weight, but like. I look enormous. Because you would I, sit in the fat seat? I would sit in the fat seat. And I go, and then I go, hey, Ray, I think we should switch seats. Wow. Does he know <laughs> that's why? No. that it, it was. I felt like because Ray's a taller guy, yeah. it felt like I was getting blocked out of the conversation. That's like the other I couldn't problem, see dude. over him that's the to other the problem guest. Is that Ray is tall. Tall guys can be fat because they transition from fat. Unless you're, if you're like 6'2 or 6'3, oh, yeah. unless you're more like 500 pounds, People just go, he's a big guy. He's big. Mm -hmm. You go from fat to big. You get this benefit. People change the adjective, and you're now big. And Dude. But if you're short, we're short guys. You gain any weight. Like If you're short and fat, you just start to look creepy. I would say we're average height guys. I guess we're technically five nine right. to five nine five nine five nine and a half. Uh, we're measuring you, dude. There's you're not, dude. I would love to measure on the pod. Just fucking get a little fucking. I don't think you're that much shorter, but you are the guy. You have, you are the guy who would add two inches. You're the guy mm -hmm. who would go. I'm five ten, yeah. and you're five eight. I mean, when did you? Yeah. I know you used to say five ten. Because this five, nine and a half thing is new. When did you transition? When did you get a half an inch more honest? You never knew this, Dan? I never told you this? What? So Ray started calling me out. He's like, you're not 5'10". And I was like, yeah, I am, dude. I'm 5'10". I went on back-to-back -back dates with tall women, and they both told me I wasn't 5'10". <laughs> yeah, you, you were the dating app liar? Uh, yeah, I wrote it up 5'10", because I thought I was. I always thought I was 5'10". You thought you were 5'10"? Yeah, the doctor told me. No, he, dude. <laughs> it's on my license, Luke. Why would it be on my license if it's not true? That would, uh, You're right. No one's ever lied on their driver's <laughs> license before. Dude, it's the government. They know. It's not like I wrote it. The government doesn't it's make any like mistakes. It's not like I wrote blue eyes, blonde hair, beautiful. Yeah, you you're know? right. The FBI checks everybody's <laughs> height to make sure that it's accurate on their license. Oh, boy. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was a bit of a miscue. Now I put 5'9", and they go, you're not 5'9". You got to at least be 5'9 and a half. Wow. Wow. Okay. You're so tall. <laughs> You're regrettably tall. They're like, Do you that, play basketball? I'm like, yeah. I haven't been on dating apps in a while because I have a lovely girlfriend. And I also wasn't on them that much when I was, when I was fucking... It's insane the way you did that. What? I have a lovely girlfriend. <laughs> it's like she's off screen with a gun to your head and just pointing it. Dude, she's going to hate this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyways. <laughs> on the way over here, I'm on a city bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, it, we're, this, today is a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Just so everybody knows. Not, yeah, this I is going to be out right after we film it. I'm putting it out. Okay, okay. So we're recording on Wednesday. I am on a city bike, booking it over here mm. from our friend's house, and I want to get here in time to do the podcast. She calls me, and I, my headphones are broken. So they're, they're out of battery. 
Yeah. So I just answer, and I'm one dude. And f- these fucking, dude, I'm in deep Astoria. Yeah. There's like Greek guys running red lights, almost hitting me. There's mm. like old lady, like drunk old ladies, like just stumbling across the street. It's tough. Dude, I'm like weaving in and out of cars and humans and babies and dogs. And she calls me and I answer my phone old school style, analog. Mm. Yeah. No headphones. Fucking yeah. analog phone answer. Yeah. Swipe. Hello. Yeah. This is Luke. Like our grandparents did. Yeah, I, I did. swiped over on the iPhone. This is why they went to war. So they could <laughs> yes. they could answer the phone like men and women. Yeah, yeah. Rotary style. I answer the phone. Two genders. <laughs> I'm holding the phone and I'm riding my bike, weaving in and out, going quickly to get here in time. Mm. And I'm like, hey, what's up? Sorry, I'm on a city bike. And she's like, nothing. <laughs> And I was like, what's going on? And I'm like nervous. I'm like, what's up? Why are you crying? And she was like, I got sad about 9-11 again. (laughs) She's she's shedding 9-11 empathy tears. And I can't. Now now I'm in. Oh, my God. And I'm scared I'm going to get hit. I'm scared that I'm not going to break quickly enough that I'm distracted. And I can't. She's about to have her own personal 9-11. Cry. When you die in Astoria, Queens. <laughs> she called me crying about 9-11. And I'm like, I'm like look, I can't. I, I'm in my head. I'm like, I can't hang up. So I keep talking to her. I'm like, what's going on? Are you okay? She's, and she's just like, yeah, I just, you know, some people died trying to save people for dying. And then those people died. And then it's just so sad. And she's like... And then she's, we used to live in Manhattan. She's like, and I, I'm sending you a picture. This is a picture I found of our old Manhattan apartment on the day that the towers fell. And it's like a picture of yeah, the yeah, burning yeah. Twin Towers <laughs> with our apartment no, building in the, in the picture. That's why Because we lived in the Seaport District in that's, Manhattan. Yeah. And she's like, Brag. people that lived in our apartment, they experienced that that day. Isn't that sad? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm fucking like. This is insane. And I'm like, I got to go. And she's like, why? What? I'm like, I have to do a podcast. Who's podcast? Why? why? Why do you have to go? And I'm like, I'm on the phone. She's like, okay. She's like, sad. <laughs> Dude, and I'm in my head. I'm thinking like, <laughs> number one, this is such a girl thing to start crying about 9-11 and to call me and to be like, I'm like risking my life on this bike. And oh she's like, but we have to talk. You have to talk me off the, the ledge. Yeah. No pun intended of, nine, of the nine eleven tears, and I'm like, but the thing is, the, the thing that's beautiful about women is, if I called her tearing up over Pearl Harbor, yeah. she would drop everything and talk me through that's that. That's fair, and she wouldn't be like doing what I'm doing, which is, yeah, yeah, no, it's very sad. Yeah. I gotta go. I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's sad. A lot of people lost their lives. Yet sad. No, no, and, I, and I'm saying things like a psychopath, yeah. like a total dude. I'm like. She goes, I don't know why I'm so emotional. I'm like, well, it is. it was objectively sad, I think, 9-11. It was, it was a real bad time. Yeah, it was like... Real bad time. I would have to say, it's good. I'm like, it's good you have empathy for others yeah, and talking yeah. like that because I'm just like scared on the bike. It's actually insane. I am I know it's 9-11 today, but it's crazy that we're going to put this episode out in two hours yeah. just laughing <laughs> yeah, about, about it. About 9-11? Um, it was also so soon, lovely... 20, 23 years. Lovely, I don't know. It was, you know, it was a fucking horrible tragedy uh, that the government did. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't. I don't believe that. I believe that maybe some guy in the government allowed it to happen. They maybe knew things were going on, but you know, you know, I don't know what kind of buildings fall like they're being demolished. <laughs> That's weird. Not tipping over, crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is like a demolition. Dude. <laughs> Nuts, dude. I got. I can't get into that right they away. They felt dude. like a slink. Yeah, they just fucking. Boom. It was like they got sucked into the ground, you teleported, drop a dude. Slinky from my side. Yeah, that's nuts. That's nuts. It was like it was like a magician disappearing. It's sad. You know when the smoke comes up and the, yeah. you're like, "Where'd the magician go?" That was nine eleven. Yeah, they were like, "Where are the towers?" Yeah, they're on the ground, dude. Also, it's you know, I mean, yeah, it's horrible, dude. But I, she was crying about it. I'm, also, I could see, like, the story that, that gets me emotional is the kid from, uh, was it BC or BU? The kid with the red bandana. That story, is, he worked there, and then he, like, always, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. This is going to sound bad. What? Uh, no, no. He would he would wear a red bandana. He was, like, working in finance or something, and he always carried this red bandana. And I don't know the meaning behind it, if it was, like, from a, a relative or something, but... Uh, he like got out of the tower and then he st- he kept running back in and out with the firefighters and he was just like a finance bro 
And uh, they found him like huddled with like a bunch of firefighters. He died, uh, obviously, but like he could have lived and gave his life. So like that is a sad story. But the entire time I'm telling it, I just keep picturing like if you were in the East Village today and you ran into like a finance bro who had like a bandana in their pocket. And I would be like, I fucking hate that guy. Dude, it's so funny. Dude, like, you know, there's some like Staten Island cop that walked through the rubble and was like, oh, fuck, dude. It looks like the Bloods and Crips did this. <laughs> Oh, bro. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, I didn't even realize the traits that it was on fucking gang territory. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I Just like I thought, it was the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude. Oh, fuck, dude. It looks like they came down here from the Bronx, just fucking stabbed the buildings till they fell down. <laughs> Tell the president we got this. <laughs> this is not federal. It's a city matter. Dude, dude, you tell me this isn't evidence? There's a bandana right here. Red bandana. Who do you know was a red bandana? Finance guy? Don't think so. <laughs> Terrible, dude. But she, this, that's the thing, dude. She's she's getting sad about just 9-11 in general, which is very sad. I could see if it was something specific. Also, she grew up in California. Yeah. Right? Was in California during 9-11. About as far away from 9-11 as you can There's get. There's a beauty to women's emotions, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I, there's, it's just not in me anymore to cry over a domestic terror attack yeah, yeah. 23 years I after mean, the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not that it's not sad, but, like, I don't Luckily, think... Luckily, I, I don't I, think me I would, and you both didn't know anybody yes. uh, who was, you know, involved, except for... Uh, Steve Ranazizi, who was in the towers. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that guy. Do you remember that? That's yeah, crazy. That was crazy. A guy really just has it all on the ups. The league is the comedian who was the actor in the league for anyone listening. Yeah. And he lied about being in the towers. Dude, in that guy's a, I haven't met him, but he's just back around. <laughs> he's like, I mean, it's great, dude. He was he was super funny. But, you, you know, you lie about being in the towers on 9-11. The industry doesn't want anything to do with you. I wonder if, like, that did help his career. Like, were there people booking him for... <laughs> were there people, like, booking him for Walgreens commercials because he was in 9-11? Because, like, you'd... Obviously, he told the lie thinking that it was... It, it was an... Opp- it, he was being opportunistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. But what are the yes. opportunities he could get in, in comedy and acting I, you know, being I, in the tower? I, uh, you know... Uh, Health insurance, maybe? I don't know. I, I actually saw the interview. I saw the interview where he talked about it. He, like, opened up. I forget where. He might have done it with, uh, I don't remember. But he uh, he said he was, like, new to L.A. 9-11 happened. He worked in the city. 9-11 happened. He shoots over to L.A. He's like, I got to stop doing this job. He worked for, like, a finance or whatever. He's like, I moved to L.A. I'm going to follow my dream, be a comedian. So he, like, makes friends with a bunch of comics that you guys would all know. We know Ari Shafir, all these guys, right? And uh, he's like sitting at the store and he maybe was a door guy, but he's very new, you know? So it's that weird kind of like, I'm, I'm so new. And there are dudes like coming by, like, you know, these legends are in there. The guys you look up to when you first start comedy, you know? And uh, one of them just was like, he was saying, you know, I, was, I was in the city, you know, on 9-11. And I guess it like somehow got re He was like, you were in the towers on 9-11? And he was just kind of like... <laughs> Yeah, 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 I was. And, dude, it just spread through the scene like wildfire that, like, duh, Steve? Steve was in the towers on 9 And then he was like, I can't be like, no, that's not true. And then it just built, built, built for, like, years, dude. Like, 15 years later. What a name. It all came out. Do you remember the story? I want to keep, like, names out of it. Yes. Um, But do you remember the story about the guy we knew? Very funny old comedian. Yeah. You know who I'm talking Um, about? I need more context. Funny guy few classes ahead of us really funny and he was hanging out at a comedy club and this lady came up to him and was like hey are you guys comedians and he's like yeah and she's like oh my god my friend dan johnson's a comedian you might know him he did stand up like in your little scene and she he was like oh you didn't hear dan died (laughs) Yes. He was like, yes, I know exactly like, what you're talking about. He was like, he wasn't paying attention right to the margin, dead on impact. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy yeah. was alive, but he was just fucking around. And she started weeping and ran away. Yeah, yeah. And he was, and the other guys, they were like, you're a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, come on. You know, he's laughing. And the woman left the comedy club. Mm-hmm. And like two months, like a, like two weeks later, I think, he gets a text or an email 
from like a comedian that's even ahead of him, yeah. a guy with some real pull. Mm-hmm. And that guy goes, hey, dude, wanted to see if you're available on the 15th. And he's like, yeah, hey, I'm fine. He goes, we're doing a fundraiser for uh, Dan Johnson's wife. Uh, I don't know if you heard he died in a car accident. <laughs> so like uh, we rented out this big, this beautiful venue, you know, his family, you know, we're going to invite his family. We haven't told him we're doing it yet. We want to surprise him. But, yeah. you know, we've got musical guests. We wanted to know if you wanted to perform. It's going to be like a benefit comedy show, raise money for, yeah. you know. <laughs> Super nice. Super nice of these guys. To put it <laughs> he on. He had to be like, he's alive. And the guy was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I made that up. And he was like, he told, I remember he told me, he's like, dude, people didn't talk to me for like six months. <laughs> he was like, I yeah. lost, temporarily lost like half my friends. Oh, uh, that guy, uh, one of the funniest guys to come out of Hysterical. Boston, I think. And uh, he's the same guy who, he, he's so many urban legends it, exist about him. It's hard to know what's real and what's not. And you hope they're all real. But he's the same one who did the sexual assault benefit. Do you yeah, remember yeah. this story? <laughs> So they do the sexual assault benefit, yeah, right? A great one. And this comedian, you know, he's with a bunch of other comics and he's the first one to go up. And uh, before the show, they had like, they made this like patchwork quilt, right? <laughs> and they're all, people are writing their stories and it's real moving. And well, then they, they like- stitched in. Yeah. And then they like stitched it all together. You know, it was like, I'm a survivor. I'm this. And they, they stitched it together and hung it on the wall. Can I wait? Can I? Yeah. What they stitched into the quilt- was all of the statistics about sex crimes that occur in the United States. So, like, mm. one in every so X it's all women these n- experiences yes, yes. this. Every X amount of seconds, a woman mm-hmm. has to experience that. All the sexual assault statistics. So there's all these numbers, these numbers on these patchwork quilts. into the quilt. And uh, he goes up there. And they hung it behind the stage, the back wall of the stage. Yeah. So, you basically, you go on stage... When you're doing your jokes, this patchwork quilt of all, just, all of like the sexual assault statistics is hanging behind it's you. Crazy, dude. Also, mm-hmm. crazy. So he goes up there and like tries to riff and uh, on the you know where they're at, and he goes first thing he looks, and he goes no. Apparently, if you get raped enough, they retire your jersey. Yeah, and they cut his mic. <laughs> cut the mic. Show over, dude. I'll def- thirty seconds in, dude. I'll defend him on that one. That oh, it's. Th- so that's a you fucking over the performers. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're, you're funny run, joke. Uh, it's hilarious. But you're also running a comedy show. It's like playing a Sarah McLaughlin SPCA <sighs> video. Yeah, and be like, yeah, let's kill these dogs. Yeah, <laughs> what are you fucking supposed to do? <laughs> what are you now? You're funny. Go be funny. Let's round up these dogs and send them to Ohio. That's you know what I mean? Totally. How like people who book corporate gigs or people who work in the corporate world thinks com- yeah. they think comedy works. Like, ever, do you remember this scene with? Uh, there's a scene in Louie with him and David Lynch. And David yeah. Lynch goes, be funny. Go. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Funny. He's doing that. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. such a fucking good scene. Yeah. But that's how, like, corporate people like that think mm-hmm. that being funny works. They're like, yeah, we'll put a, you know... We'll put the rape blanket on stage. And then you guys will make some jokes. Yeah. It'll be great. Have fun. Talk to the crowd. Oh, my God. What are you so sad? (laughs) It's crazy. Crazy. It's just an insane fucking. Yeah, it's uh, nuts, dude. Oh, dude. I just had a moment of panic that I didn't hit the record button. And we're good. There was some hot stuff in there, dude. That would have been a nightmare. (laughs) Yeah, dude. We just have to redo everything. Oh, my God. So 9-11, am I right? <laughs> fucking riff and bets. Let me tell you a little story. Oh, my God. Um, dude, hey, I, I don't want to brag, but, dude, you back from Austin, baby. Oh, yeah. Luke moved to Austin, and he's back, staying at my apartment, so I forced him to do the pod, uh, which was very nice. Uh, he made a nice little, had a nice, nice little gym day this morning. We did. We worked out. Did a nice little workout, made some breakfast, dude. You made some steak and eggs. That was great. It was good. It was a pretty healthy day so Dude, far. it was, I'm like 200 like calories in. Zen and drink Diet Coke. This it's is the breakfast of champions right here. Dude, I've been eating a lot of steak. Yeah. I've been eating a lot of steak. Like Jordan Peterson. I'm on the Jordan Peterson diet. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on the Jordan. Yeah, dude. There you go. I eat three steaks. Beef, salt, and water. That's it. That's it. Sparkling, sometimes hot water, cock, <laughs> men's cocks. I have three steaks a day. <laughs> My accents are so bad. I dude. eat an all meat diet. It's the cock of Latino men. That's mostly what consists of my diet. That's good, dude. God damn, Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> I have three steaks. Yeah. <laughs> I have three steaks a day. We've done Peterson a lot on the podcast. Oh, dude, have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, sometimes he's one of the guys that people 
The uh, yeah, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, cancel culture, fucked up, man. It's also like, actually, if you are podcasting or something, you get way more shit if you make fun of anybody that right wing or right mm-hmm. adjacent. You get way more shit. Yeah, I could be like AOC. She's a whore. She fucking kills people. I hope she gets hit by a car. I can say horrible things, yeah. and everybody's like, "Fuck this fucking rules." Because like everybody on the internet that likes comedy is like right wing now. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. if I'm like Kyle Rittenhouse, he's a little dork. He's like, he's an American patriot. <laughs> <laughs> I freak the ah. fuck out, dude. I'm like, Jesus Christ, we, dude. We Relax. don't even post. We don't. If we do something about Peterson, we'll just like we'll leave it in the long form. We we won't even post a clip. <laughs> no every, clips. No every clips. Every clip is like, Mr. Peterson, help me. <laughs> Doctor Peterson, help me through the darkest time. You know, my parents got divorced. I was 41 years old. It was really <laughs> hard for me. It's like fucking every... It's like all these like... Do you know how hard it is to be a 41-year-old man and have to choose yeah. where you want to live, your mom or yeah. your dad's house? Yeah. <laughs> for 38 years, I never thought of cleaning my room. And then <laughs> Jordan Peterson brought up the point. No. Yeah. <laughs> all these guys. I never thought I could get a job better than what I had. All his advice... His advice is clearly just for like... I don't think it was advice that was originally intended for able-bodied men. I think that it was like the the keys to life for guys with Down syndrome. Because every point is like stuff that you learn when you're in like kindergarten. Yeah. It got to be for dudes who have some type of developmental don't disability. Don't people with scissors. Tie your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like every fucking, every bit of advice is like pre-K level realizations. Every bit of advice is like, Wash with water and soap. (laughs) Wash the soap off before you get out of the shower. Dry. (laughs) Towel dry. (laughs) Dude, he's got a babe of a daughter, huh? Yeah, yeah, she's she's a piece. Have you seen her in Texas? No, no. Are they down there? I thought they're. I I think they're in Tennessee. Ah, that's another good spot, dude. Yeah, it's where real Americans are, dude. Nashville, Texas, Tennessee. Parts of Atlanta, <laughs> not other parts. I hate to sound like a cunt. Everybody's going to hate this, but, I, dude, New York is just the fucking, New York's still a king. Oh, yeah, it's the best. I'm sorry. You want to tell the people what you said when I was getting a haircut, what you texted me <laughs> about New York being so dope, dude? <laughs> there was a guy. <laughs> you don't have to say it. You could, dude. Dude, I felt, I never felt whiter. There was a guy behind me, sketchy guy. He was just acting weird and, like, looking at me every time I turned around. And he was walking behind me for like blocks. By the way, this is broad daylight, and I'm a grown man. But hat guy. Wait, Luke. Before to, you said, was he white? Happened to be Dominican, <laughs> and I was getting a little uncomfortable. So I ducked off into a hipster coffee shop and got a cold brew. Oh my! I, God. I got a seven dollar coffee because I was scared of a Latino man on the <laughs> sidewalk. I've never felt whiter in my just life. Just walking home from work, you know? <laughs> he was, yeah. He He'd was, been in Texas too he's long. He's a great guy. It's, yeah, no. In Texas, is Mexican dudes, and they're all Dude, happy. They'll let you know they're... You've been in Texas so long, you come back here, and you're like, damn, he's on the sidewalk. He's probably up to no good. <laughs> 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 probably up to some trouble. Yeah. I, had to, I had to espresso my way out of a pinch. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, can I have a coffee and also your phone to call the police? (laughs) I need to make a complaint. (laughs) (laughs) Don't mess with me, Jorge. I have my emotional support dog. Back away, Hector. (laughs) Dude, come on. Oh, that's so good, dude. It's Yeah, it was really lame. (laughs) It's the lamest I've felt in a while. It was, I mean... I couldn't uh, believe it. When I realized what I did, I didn't realize it until after. And I was like, God, man, get was, it fucking together. That was a lot. It was a lot. I love that, though. Hey, listen, I've done that. I, You know, I've crossed the street. There's like a lady behind me. And I'm like, yeah, I, just, <laughs> lady I don't want to get into it. You know, she looks fierce. She looks she looks tough, dude. It looks like trouble. <laughs> dude, yeah, it's dead. I fucking came home uh, while I was waiting for you. And I fucking got a couple scratch tickets. Oh, nice. Did you win? No. No, of course not, dude. You love scratch tickets. I love them. I love them. It's probably the trashiest thing about me. Yeah, that's pretty trash. I don't know what could... From, for you, I think the trashiest thing is like being from Buffalo. Definitely. But uh, for me, yeah, scratch tickets. I also, I love 7-Eleven coffee. I'm with you on dude, that. Dude. I'm actually it, not it pushing back It is the best that. coffee around. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I had it yesterday when I was out on Long Island, and it is so... Good, dude. It's just, hey, it reminds me of waking up to go out and do some landscaping at five in the morning, working through college, 
<laughs> that's that's what it is. It it's, goes. There's something to I hate like my life. Coffee. Yeah. I have a sip and I go. Ah. Yeah. No, it's good. Seven Eleven coffee is good. I like it. I, I'm with you on that one. It's nice. Yeah, Buffalo is, dude. I also, it's making me sad. And it's starting to make me feel like a like a soft ass bitch because I'm starting to realize things about Buffalo that are just bad. Yeah, the food is. I mean, everybody in Buffalo thinks that Buffalo food is amazing, and I'm like, the wings are great. Yeah, if you get them at a real good spot, like Nine Eleven Tavern, Gabriel's Gate. Nine Eleven Tavern, funny enough, literally, it's what on Nine Eleven. The best wing spot in in Buffalo is called Nine Eleven. Never forget. Never forget. Is that real? Did they the name it after Nine no, Eleven? I used to have a bit about this. No, did they, you? It was the address. Of this 9-11, and That's they were so just funny. like, we're not changing. God damn, when we were on 7th Street, hopefully no tragedy ever happens on 7th Street. 7th yeah. <laughs> Street comedy! Yeah, like, Fucking what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> My God. <laughs> dude, did you hear? There is apparently, speaking of troublemakers, dude, I just thought of this. I didn't think of it before. <laughs> um, there is apparently a serial killer in Manhattan. Really? Dude, they found, apparently, like, my brother sent it to me. He's on a lot of alt-right websites, so I don't know if it's true, but... Uh, so you're looking at Adam. <laughs> and his name is Eric Adams. You don't know you are seeing the policies. And her that. name's AOC. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. killing a lot of babies. Here. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a big pro-lifer in. Yeah. Dude. Uh, uh, so what's going on? Apparently, there's been, like, three bodies who that have been discovered in Brooklyn in the water. Remember, this was a thing in Boston for a while, the Boston serial killer. And like the police came out and they're like, there's no, oh, no. serial killer in Boston. So and you're like, autumn, oh, autumn sorry about this. My girl, it, it's outside yeah. the Brooklyn Mirage. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's apparently a serial killer. Let's say, is there a serial killer in New York City? Oh, of course, the M NYPD rejects it that there's a serial killer. Oh, because body parts are showing up. Just, are they body parts? Yeah, body parts are washing up. It's probably just Not like... whole bodies? Uh, I, there was Pieces? a whole body. Uh, serial killer rumor body after parts. body parts wash up. Dude, that's a serial killer. Yeah. They're quashing the rumors. This is also the same people who... Uh, th these governments, they don't want to admit to their wrongdoing and their faults of not being able... They want everything to be safe. Everything's fine. We're good. Remember when they kept finding dead prostitutes on Long Island? And everyone was like, oh, it's the Gilgo killer. The Gilgo. Everyone's like, no, no, no. We found seven dead prostitutes, not connected at all. And then they catch the guy. Yeah. <laughs> they catch the guy. Like last year, all through high school, that was like, there's a serial killer it's on so, Long Island. It's also so funny they caught him because he left a pizza crust. So is there anything more Long Island than oh, that? Well, dude. It's actually anti Long Island. We eat our crust on Long Island, <laughs> unless you're a goddamn weirdo. You know, <laughs> yeah, we caught him. You know, it was tough, but uh, thankfully the perpetrator left a uh, pair of Jordan threes and some turntables <laughs> outside of where he committed the murders. <laughs> There was a bit of clues. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there was no DNA, but there was a pack of Newports, and it pointed us in the right direction, if you know what I mean. <laughs> there was a, there was a, <laughs> there was a bootleg copy of big, <laughs> of notorious Bigs ready to die. Yeah, yeah. There was a Mets jersey and some leftover stromboli, and we were able to pinpoint the perpetrator off that, thankfully. Yeah. Dude, yeah, outside of the Mirage Man. Fucking uh, second death this summer in a row where people are going missing around this nightclub and then being found in the creek in Brooklyn. Newton Creek. Wow. Where's Newton Creek? Brooklyn. Dude, they gave they no give idea. fake names to so mm -hmm. much shit in New York City. Gowanus. Oh, that's... It's know. not a real place. No. Gowanus is not a real... Is, is that in Brooklyn? It's Park Slope. Oh. Park Slope. Uh -uh. It's a shitty area, Park Slope. It's Park Slope where the uh, warehouses are. Everyone's like, Gowanus. <coughs> yeah, yeah. They'll do that in New York. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I live in Turtle Bay. I'm like, we... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? The other one, did you see uh, <clears throat> Deshaun Watson's new allegations that yeah. came out? He's in for some, dude. My buddy texted me that article yeah. on a, <laughs> into the group chat. Yeah. Our fantasy league group chat. It said, TBH, I can't picture him doing something like that. <laughs> Just not the Deshaun I know. Dude, it is bad. I read the article he's a, he's last a night. Sex criminal. Like, he might be banned from the NFL. 
It's kind of crazy that they're not even. It do, they don't seem to be considering it. Right. I mean, he's a serial dude. He's like an SVU character. <clears throat> Dude, Ray Rice, I mean, Ray Rice got fucking kicked out for way less. That, yeah, I mean, that's... Guy can't fucking, you know, <laughs> lose it in an elevator. He's going for the butt. One time, dude, one time he uh, lost his cool. I mean, like, yeah, that's that guy, like, that's bad. But oh, yeah, it's hard. He, but he got his whole career fucked up for that. Ray Rice? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, he beat the shit out of his... Was she pregnant? I don't even know. No. His wife beat the crap out of her, dude. Unconscious. He really, he didn't even, I don't even know if that counts as beating the crap out of her. He really just had one nice left hook. <laughs> dude. And I then mean, when he drags her out of the elevator, I was like, oh look. my God. That's a bad I didn't look. want her to go up, uh, commission a Goodell. I didn't want her to go up unattended <laughs> while unconscious in the elevator. So I think I should get some points for rem removing her from the situation <laughs> to safety. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, dude, yeah, Rutgers guy. Wasn't he a Rutgers guy? Ray Rice? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, Rutgers. Dude, Sean Watson's crazy that he's not. He's also bad now at football. Oh, dude. I, I think the team hates him, too. Did Probably. you see that? They uh, He got... He tried to help, like, the running back up, and the yeah. running back, like, swatted his hand away. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'll get up myself. Which, you know, they probably yeah. hate him. He stinks. Thank it's God the Jets crazy. didn't get him. He's just a serial sex offender. Yeah, I dude, I have the article. They said, uh, uh, it is crazy. It's not like, so all of his other cases are not good, but it was all, like, massage therapists that he, like, was trying to get, you know... Trying to get a couple happy endings, though. You know, <laughs> oh, massage my butt, dude. And, like, you know. Yeah, that's it. He is in butt massage. Oh, it's so weird. But this one is crazy. This one is, no, this one is way this different. This one is harrowing. From all the other ones yeah. that, you know. And I didn't get into uh, all 35 of the other ones uh, that, you know, what did he settle? 34 out of 35 cases? Yeah. Nuts. Uh, yeah, this one is. That's putting up Cosby numbers. <laughs> dude, he's, he's trying. He's fucking insane also so she, he's going to her apartment for a dinner date right you read this already yes he's I know, going I to her apartment thing. for a dinner date when he was playing for the texans and he got angry when he couldn't find her apartment and was yelling at her on the phone have you ever yelled at someone before meeting them for a first date yeah that's nuts <laughs> and then he basically just got naked and was like massage me yeah <laughs> and she was like i don't want to and he was like yeah you do she's like no <laughs> I don't. Just an angry Sean Watson outside being like, but you gave me the wrong address. I'm trying to get my ass rubbed. <laughs> Where you at? Yell out the window. Two in the morning. I'm trying to get my ass rubbed. You're going to give me the wrong direction. Don't blame Google Maps. It ain't Google Maps. It's you. Get in the way of the ass rub. Also, dude, an ass rub, not great. I no. bet it's not great, okay? No. Yeah. That, that, I don't think that would feel that good. Maybe he's gay. An ass massage? Is that, yeah? I mean, yeah, maybe. Is that gay? Do gay guys massage his asses? Uh, probably. In the saunas. Maybe. It's, steam, you know. Steam room activity. Steam room. Have you ever been to the steam room? No, like one of those Russian baths? Yeah. No, I've oh, heard great. exclusively great things about Great. Them. We used to go to one in uh, Boston. This is bizarre, but uh, we used to go, me and my buddies from work, we would go after work sometimes. It was called Dillon's, D-I-L-L-O-N-S, in Chelsea, under the bridge. And it was all just these Russian guys. And I remember the first time we went in, and they have a buffet. They had a buffet of food. They had crab legs. And they were like, you would go into the steam room, the sauna, take a shower in between, just like rinse yeah. off cold water. And they had these paper handmade signs like that someone printed off with computer paper and it said, all lewd and lascivious behavior will be prosecuted. <laughs> I was like, dude, not even a permanent sign. It's like melting, you know? It's like the ink is running because of yeah. the steam. I was like, yeah, that's nuts, dude. Just someone <laughs> jerking off in front of a bunch of guys. So you just go and it's just a steam room? Yeah, you just sit there. And just steam it you up? You sweat it out, dude. You yeah. sweat it Are all steam out. steam rooms better than saunas? Um, I think saunas are better for you. Okay. Uh, but steam rooms are, I don't really know. I think they accomplish the same thing. Get you hot. But who knows? You know who would know? Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I bet he would know. <laughs> well, one is hot and one is wet. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't, that didn't answer my question at all. <laughs> steam room's great for a man who's on my all cock diet. <laughs> 
It's a great place. <laughs> One is. <laughs> Put your dick away. <laughs> in the steam room. <laughs> oh, man. If I think too much about the accent, he turns British. Yeah, yeah. Or Down syndrome. <laughs> Yeah, you're not, you're not Down syndrome it. Jordison Down syndrome Jordan Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough accent. <laughs> Clean your <room. laughs> I'm trying to think of how to do it. <clears throat> Jordan Peterson. Is out. So you gotta start like this. This is Jordan. Jordan. This is Jordan. <laughs> That's it's not, hard to make that, that. You sound like a smoker, dude. <laughs> That'd be Jordan. Yeah. Well, I th- Jordan, Jordan Peters, no, Jordan Peters on Down syndrome will be, I've got a very strict diet. Nothing but gummy bears. <laughs> yes. All jelly bean diet. <laughs> That's Jordan Peters. <laughs> that is the sound of my Velcro shoes. For the last seven years, I've eaten nothing but yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> Down syndrome, Jerry Peterson. Yeah, that's a good bet. That's a good bet, dude. That's a good bet. That's a good bet. It's a fun bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Clean your room. Eat your Legos. <laughs> um, I can squat five times my body weight. <laughs> He's very strong. He's very strong, dude. He's just ripped up, dude. <laughs> mm. uh, that fucking oh I love that Down syndrome <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man God This has been good fun dude <laughs> Where do you go from there You know Where do you go That, from dude, this, this, that was the that fucking up, That was it dude That was the That was the one uh, um, I also got another news thing uh, Did you see Shannon Sharp What happened Shannon Sharp today This morning Hot off the presses uh, <laughs> He Club Shay Shay yeah. was uh, he was on Instagram live this morning and then I guess forgot to turn it off and he, he it's like on his bedside table and he starts having sex on Instagram live. Dan. Really? <laughs> you didn't see this. Dan. No. Yeah. He's having sex on Instagram live. I'm look this up on Twitter. Right they can't now. see it. You can't see it, but you can hear it. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of moaning. <laughs> Thankfully, female, not from him. And uh but then he he responded. He was he just said, "My Instagram got hacked, guys." <laughs> like what, dude? What are you Whoa. talking about? <laughs> it got hacked. Just own it and be like, "Hey, man, we're all human, okay?" Oh hell yeah, <laughs> that's the way we doing it. <laughs> oh oh, there it is. You got it. Uh yeah. Let's see. Can we play the? We're not gonna get in trouble. Huh? No. Oh, dude, that's absolutely him. Yeah, it's him. I love it when he comes. He's just like, oh, skip. <laughs> um, dude, skip. All, the comments are hilarious, dude. They're just like, oh, this is not okay. Unk, what are you doing? Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, they found the girl. He was. Oh, dude, the internet. I mean, they already found her? Yeah. What she look like? She's like a mi- hot middle-aged black lady. Okay. Right? She's cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an appropriate woman for Shannon Sharp to be with. At yeah. least he's not into like, you know, people don't like when dudes date way younger than them. Yeah. I think this is age appropriate. Yeah. For him to be banging on Instagram live. <laughs> I wonder why they thought. Oh, because he was saying Michelle. Oh, probably. Yeah. Wow, dude. He's got p- people. Leave people. People alone. are nuts. Right? People this are nuts guy. with that, dude. They are really digging in. Yeah. That's crazy, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, Damn. fucking really digging it. Like, how do you, how do you come back? I, I think that is crazy. You gotta own that shit, though. You just gotta be like, yeah, I was fucking. Yeah, I was. Fu- yeah, I was fucking. You know, I like to get deep in the pussy. I, <laughs> uh, the only thing I like to do in the morning is wake up, have sex, and then drink a coffee. Yeah. I call pussy my morning coffee. Um. Yeah, he, uh, 
It's also, I actually think it's not a bad look because it sounded like she was enjoying herself. Yeah. Wouldn't it? I, that's what I, I will say. To the shout out to all the famous guys out there, mm. the guys who have been caught in this situation, I think most of the time have been sounding like they're doing a good job yeah. sexually. Yeah, it would suck if like the one time you left Instagram Live on, you got like whiskey dick. You're like, <laughs> you know, this usually doesn't happen. Like that's what <laughs> everybody's yeah, on Instagram but, Live. You're like, yeah, let me just just give me a second. Just you're just, done already. Just a couple. No, I can go again. I can just a couple minutes. That was so fast. No, I, I know. Oh it's, my god. Not, look, Doug, it's going to be fine, you know? Just, that was like 30 seconds. I'm going to go outside. Let me just smoke a cigarette. I'll be right back. I didn't even feel it inside me. What is it, three inches? Okay, you have a <laughs> giant vagina. How dare you? I gave birth to five children. <laughs> this, is like, uh, yeah. this is like, oh my God. I hope this is a baby. He's like, sorry, I got hacked. Shannon Sharp, dude. I mean, that was... I, I think it's a good look. I think it's a great look. Yeah. I got, you got to own that, though. You're not you, losing like, fans. Hey, man. No, he's probably gaining oh, fans. Right? Female fans. Yeah. Broadening his demo. Bunch of, is he single? He's divorced, yes. right? He's single, yeah. uh, divorced, I'm assuming. He's so jacked. A lot of those celebs, a lot of celebs are divorced, right? I think yeah. a lot of everybody's divorced. A lot of everybody. 50%. Yeah. That, that number's got to be up. The second marriage divorce rates are incredibly high. That's a wild move. It's like 60%. And then third marriages are like 79. Yeah. Uh -huh. but at that point, you have a... Which problem. makes it tough. If you're a first marriage guy and you marry like a, a lady who's been divorced twice, you're like, yeah, this, this isn't good. That's a weird, that's such an old person thing. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people our age that when we're in our 50s get into a second and third marriage. Mm -mm. No. no. Mm -mm. That's like an old person thing. I think what it is is like, yeah, the that generation was like, fuck, we're not human unless we have a partner in our home. Yeah, it's like not a real relationship. Yeah, I, I, what, what's the point of living if I don't have, like, a companion yeah, I that feel, I get to bring to my nephew's birthday party? I feel like those old guys used to cheat until they were married. Like, the marriage mm. was a... That was when they decided to stop cheating. Was it like, we got it in writing. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. They, yeah. So many dudes that I know fucking cheat. Yeah? it's Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, you meet guys, you meet guys all the time in comedy who cheat. That's true. You know? I don't, no specific. No, not, none. No. no I, when snitching. I say guys, no, like, friends, good friends of mine, but, like. No snitching. No, no. Absolutely not. But, like, dude, I mean, it's like athletes, right? Yeah. Oh, did you see uh, Dave Grohl? Dave yeah, Grohl. Dave everyone's Grohl got a side real upset. Yeah, yeah, real upset. They're like, he was one of the good ones. That would be, like, Keanu Reeves getting a chick pregnant. That's the weirdest thing to care about. I just I, still cares? fully don't. I don't fully grasped the parasocial thing. Like, being upset at the lead singer of the Foo Fighters. No. It don't make sense. No. It does not make sense, okay? Yeah, could... Like, oh, you, you like his music less? Like, there's Foo a Foo Fighters, Fighters yeah. poster right there, I dude. I saw one earlier. I'm going to get him to sign it and be like, you know, his dick print right yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's a weird thing to care about. It's like, an what, insane you move. You can't listen to Everlong anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you got some chick pregnant. Like Ever no stuff. longer, if you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a weird thing to care about. I don't know. I, I, you don't know these people, dude. I it's mean, there's stories. I don't know if this is true, but it's it is it is stories that I've heard from someone who worked in like the NBA circles. Like they were like uh, not like you know with the team, but apparently. All those guys like cheat on the road, they and have to. the guy specifically that he mentioned was LeBron James, where a guy who's never gotten in trouble never whispers about side checks. Yeah, never, never an inkling that he had a, a lady on the side. Uh, that he would like come to the arena and he would pick up chicks at the arena, like crazy pregame warm ups. He would like scout the crowd, got a hot wife, and too. then he would give uh, his number to like one of the ball boys, and they would run it up wow. and like give it to a chick. Like, hey, this is LeBron's number. Call Crazy. him after the game. I wonder if he and his wife have, like, a, some agreement. I think he got to. Right? I think it's probably, like, if you're that famous, he, he's probably one of the top 10 most famous people in the world. Definitely. Right? Yeah. LeBron James. Not, he's probably more famous worldwide than Tom Brady. Definitely. You know? For sure. Probably he, more famous worldwide than the Kardashians. Yeah, who are, like, the most famous people? Taylor Swift. Taylor LeBron, Swift, LeBron, Messi, Ronaldo, Trump, Trump, 
you know, the Pope. The Pope? I guess so. But what's his name? Francis. Yeah? Yeah. You sure that's not just a good guess? No, it's Francis, dude. Okay. Pope, Pope, Pope Francis, I think the first. Maybe the second. There's no way there's never been a Pope Francis. Uh, he's the first Pope Francis? I think he's the second. Pope, Pope, PF2. I, I, I was a John Paul kid. John Paul too, yeah. Polish guy. Love oh, really? it. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. Dude, he is, J, JP, JP2 is massive in the Polish you're community. Right. Damn, dude, you're right. It is Pope Francis the first. Wait, his name was Jorge Mario Bergoglio. Mm, yeah. Bergoglio. Yeah. Where is he from? Argentina. Uh, damn, dude, you're fucking killing it. Dude. How did you know this? Catholic school, 19 years. Damn, I went to Catholic 35 school. 35 years. Too. I didn't know 35 years. Catholic oh, school. The pope for? Now he's the new pope. Oh, he's, yeah, but he's been, it was when uh, it was J- JP2, Benedict the second, and then Pope Francis the first. Okay, so 2013. Damn, yeah, okay. 2013. Dude, I know my pope. Last year I was in high school. Yeah. I don't remember that. I went to a Catholic school. I was not paying attention. <laughs> Dude. Damn. JP. JP2 was great, you know. Did you go to an all-boys Catholic high school? No. Dude. I went all-boys. Did you? Yeah. How was that? So fun. I bet it would be fun. It was I awesome. feel like in eighth grade, we talked about, like, we were all like, oh, we got to be with the girls. But now, if I could do it again, I would be like, hey, I want to hang with the boys. There's a girl's school down the, sh- down the street. Yeah. So, like, if you wanted to go talk to some girls, you could after school. And nobody's trying to act cool. It's kind of awesome. Yes. It was definitely like more of a funniness. Athletics were a way to be like, that was a dick measuring contest. Funniness was big. Who's yeah. funny? Who's being funny yeah. in class? Who's being funny in the lunchroom? Mm-hmm. It, well, it was nobody was like dressing cool. Guys, would, dude, we had to wear like sh- nice shirts and ties because mm-hmm. it's like all boys Catholic high school. I remember two of my friends had a competition to see who could wear the same outfit every day. <laughs> The longest. I love that. I I don't think they were washing them. They were wearing them like 28 days in a row. It was fun. So there good. were a lot of fights. A lot of fights. I bet really? there was a lot of fights at regular school. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of fights at our school. Dudes were just went, having yeah, it yeah. out. Yeah. Well, it's also, I went to uh, St. Anthony's, which is Catholic school on Long Island, and it brings together, you know, people from all over the island. So you okay. get some real, you know... Some real troublemakers there. Wow. Okay. No, no. You get you get like you get people from Huntington, you get people from Garden City, and then you get people from like, you know Private Town. Central Islip. Yeah. And Wine Danch. And you're like, Yeah. Yeah. These guys, you know, were born with boxing gloves. You know, yeah. no gloves, just tough knuckles. Is Northport's nice, right? Northport is beautiful. Okay. Gorgeous. Yeah. Really nice. I'm more of a North Shore guy myself. Yeah. Well, when you're raised there. It's a uh, South Shore is a little classless, I will say. You know, they they <laughs> they, they they like the uh, they like the gaudiness. I would say South Shore is a little similar to like the Jersey Shore show. It's got like mob people too, or had. That's mob. a lot of North Shore is like that, but it's like you know you get them. Yeah, North Shore is a lot of that like finance money, old money. Yeah, South Shore is like yeah, you know. Where's the Brookville? Has the crazy Brookville? Brookville is big, big money. Crazy Big old like there. estates, right? Old Brookville, yeah, dude. Yeah. My that's my dad. My dad's a you know he's a custom woodworker. woodworker. Yeah. So we used to work in all those homes, dude. I would that's go sick. and work with them, dude. The amount of like, be like, oh, uh, can I use the bathroom? And I would go use the bathroom, and it would be like, yep, yep. It's uh down the hall to the left, down three flights of stairs, up two more, uh, spin around yeah. and uh, pr- pull the book out on the. Yeah, the third shelf, and that's the bathroom. You're like, God damn, this is bigger than my school. It's, it's like, crazy. Fuck. I went to the Hamptons a couple weeks ago, and I get it now. I did. I didn't. I don't know what why do you. I, what do you get? The money. Just you're like, why ah, it's no. Why it's, it's nice. like awesome. The Hamptons is nice if you're. Uh, I didn't like get like what's you're going the big to a deal? house. Yeah. You know someone there who has a house. That's nice. But if you just go into the Hamptons to be like, we're gonna eat lobster. Yeah. It's like no. I mean, I do. I like the little towns. I like the way the houses look. Beautiful. The beaches are really nice. I thought it was the food is great. It was. It's a nice. I get why like rich people mm-hmm. have you know spend the actual towns of like the Hamptons dollars. and Montauk. Like those are some of the best that you're gonna find. Yeah. in the country. Like that's like it's like that Martha Vin- Martha's Vineyard style. Like those old like kind of love that those, those sea beaten homes where it's yeah, like they the start to weather. Yeah. yeah, dude. I love yeah. that look. <laughs> New England's awesome. Yeah, like I mean, coastal yeah, Maine and it is. stuff, dude. You love New England. New England's great. It's it's pretty good. 
Come on, it's really nice. Hey, it's no Long Island, okay? Yeah. Your Long Island people are nuts with that. It's I thought like if you say yeah to someone, yeah, he's got like a Long Island vibe, yeah. or how was that place? It was kind of like Long Island. <laughs> Anybody from other parts of the country, so you're, it's good to be aware of stereotypes. They think trashy, but Long Island people. Dude, I've had Long Island friends that are like, Long Island people are spoiled. They grew up in the best place on earth. I'm like, are you out of your mind? What are you talking about? It kind of is, dude. It kind of I is the best place on earth. That's so weird to think that. It's pretty great. It's okay. It's all right. I mean, it's nice. You also talk about Long Island. Like, Long Island suburbs are nice, but there's like nice suburbs everywhere. There's this, it's true. just the suburbs. It's true. But you're down the road from the city. Quick little, you know, jog. Yeah, Get right to Manhattan. I mean, Greatest I guess city so. in the world, you know. I like, I like the Hudson Valley. More Not anymore. Valley. Thanks, Eric Adams. But, you know, <laughs> I, fucking Biden. Buffalo people are also delusional, though, Buffalo, which is insane. I mean, to say that Buffalo is one of the greatest places to live is a pure delusional statement. It's bizarre. It's a pure, beautiful. I, I you know, it, what did I text you? I went to a wedding there once um, before we went together. And I, I went there and I took a picture and I go, this is urban decay. Yeah, it's, This it's, is just urban no, it's falling decay. Apart. Well, the thing I've realized, I was wondering why Buffalo people like Buffalo so much. Mm-hmm. Like why my friends and family think it's the greatest place in the world. And there are nice parts that people don't know about. It's because it's so cheap that you can have a really nice life on like 80 grand a year salary. Like a really nice life. Yeah. My friends all own houses. They're all nice. I'm not saying they're mansions, Nuts. but they're nice houses. They're all homeowners. Mm. They all drive nice cars. I'm not saying crazy cars, but they drive 2024 20, cars. Yeah. So they all have new cars and they own their homeowners. And you could do that on like 60, 70 grand a year. And so they, when Buffalo people live pretty much almost anywhere else, they yeah. piss and moan about how expensive it is. Yeah. Dude, I had a friend that was living in Denver. He was like, Ugh. it's like, you gotta be a gazillion. I'm like, it's Denver. Will you fucking, it's not Malibu. <laughs> Yeah, what are you yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. insane? Yeah. Oh, Denver. Whoa. Dude, it's, I'm like, oh, yeah, real. Everybody knows I'm fucking Denver. Dude, it's yeah. getting pricey here. Did I tell you I went to the bar? Well, I didn't this is drink. New York City. But a buddy of mine was at the bar with us, and he got two drinks to watch Thursday Night Football last doubles. week. Doubles. Doubles. He ordered two gin and tonics, doubles. Okay. So they, when the bill comes, and I go, I look at it, I go, is this right? I asked the way she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was $20. For the gin and tonic, plus ten for the double, plus two dollars for rocks. It was a thirty-two dollar drink. That's ridiculous. Sixty-four dollars. Yeah, New York for is, two drinks. I've never technically seen four. I guess expensive wise, I've been to expensive places. Yeah, like people talk about San Francisco and London and all this stuff. I've never seen anywhere like New York. Uh-uh. You're just getting reamed, mm-hmm. dude. I got a hotel. It was three hundred twenty dollars a night. That hotel I got. Yeah. Four nights. I spent like thirteen hundred dollars. It nice. was in the middle of the Queensbridge pro- project, <laughs> the biggest project development in the country. Oh, I was uh, in a. I was in a Wyndham by Wingate. Wingate by Wyndham. It's a shithole. It's a fuck in the middle of where Nas grew up. There's like murals of Nas. Did you like go to the? Did the you go sidewalk. where? Did you go to his? I'm sure there's a, like a plaque or something in his uh, where he grew up. The apartment. Did you go? Did I go to his apartment? Yeah. I didn't want to get shot in the face. No. <laughs> You're just walking around the hood like, excuse me, fellas. Um, do you know where Nas lived? Do you know where Nas lived? And they're like, yeah, right down here. Come yeah. down the alley yeah. with me. Yeah. <laughs> come come on down here. <laughs> no, nah, dude, there's a fee. Empty your pockets. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. Nas grew up right over here in his Altima. <laughs> you just get in the car. Yeah, he grew up in this Nissan Altima. <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. Tinted windows. Yeah. Just real tinted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't see much growing up. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> it was... Dude, uh, tinted windows, speaking of, the Tyreek Hill shit is wild. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wild. Also, yeah, we could give a hot take about this. We're getting close to the end, but, you know, uh, that is just absolutely insane. I said the funniest part, it, we're at 53 minutes. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I was sorry. I was making sure it didn't... You scared it, me. No, really. it's still going. It's still going, dude. Oh, fuck. We got to record the whole thing over. Fuck, damn it. Nah, we're just kidding. Um, I hope the video is playing. Otherwise, that would be also a nightmare. That would be I'm just rattled. Dead. Does it ever not play? No. Okay. I've never done that. You're getting intrusive thoughts. I am, dude. 
All right, we're back. The video is going. Uh, that was, dude, I wouldn't have been able to focus if uh, for the next seven minutes because I would have been like, did we just fucking record a whole episode where we had some steam? We had some heat in the beginning talking about 9-11. The funniest um, part about the Tyree Kill thing is you, like, it was fucked up. Those cops were psychotic. Yeah. But you also, like, there were so many people who clearly wanted to make it like a 2020 protest thing. Oh, and yeah. I'm like... It's so funny how aggressively Cuban the cops are. They're like, my brain, my brain, you have to get on the ground. Now you're going to yell. Now you're going to go to yell. Now my brain, my brain, get on the ground. You yeah, have to dude. get on the ground. Yeah, give me your license. Give my me your license. No, your license. No, no, no. No, you're getting a tiki. No, you're getting a tiki. Yeah, tiki, tiki. Yeah, yeah. Let's. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Dude, the one dude I said, nothing against guys with tattoos, but the guy who was throwing them on the ground, he's got fucking tattoos all the way up his fingers. I'm like, this is a guy who's been to prison. Yeah, yeah Those yeah. are prison tattoos right there. Well, he's cop- tossing them around. Cops are not. Obviously, both you and I back the blue. Yeah, <laughs> like dude, it, but listen. Cops, cops are, not, are very they're, reasonable. They're not geniuses, though. Let's let's be clear about that. It is the worst. I also got fired up when I saw the Tiger Kill thing because my algorithm on YouTube, it shows me, I told you, it's, it's people with Down syndrome uh, doing awesome things. Yeah. Uh, knives, like pocket knives, and uh, it, it's, it's people making fools of the cops they're like i know my rights yeah, yeah, yeah and i love every video dude i got i get real into these like cops who lose it on camera yeah have you ever watched those they're great they're Just so freak good. out oh yeah dude the best ones are when the cops are like they're they'll be like you can't film me delete it delete it delete her i'll bring you and i'll arrest you and then they'll get a supervisor to come and they're like all right have a nice day take it easy and they're yeah. like you're great you tyrant you piece of shit tyrant yeah, yeah, and then they're just like they just stand there and they're like i'm gonna beat the shit out of my wife tonight <laughs> yeah dude. yeah yeah i mean cops are <laughs> <laughs> they can't take it out on the street Someone's getting it at home. <laughs> so funny. It's it's police officers and Down syndrome guys. Like the algorithm is telling you something about your IQ. <laughs> He's like, Dylan, you know, you can fucking, you should become a Down syndrome cop. And then... <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, I don't know what it is. My whole algorithm is just 7-Eleven cashiers and Polish people. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's so wild what people can become Instagram influencers for. Do you see the dude now who's a uh, he uh, he just works at like a Seven Eleven and he films himself interacting with customers? Yeah, he's got like millions of followers on on YouTube. I love the guys. There's two Middle Eastern dudes who run a bodega here in New York, and they have a shitload of TikTok followers because. They'll give away free bags of chips to the kids if the kids get the math quiz right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are great. When they go, hey, you got, uh, you got. If you get this right, you get thirty seconds shopping spree. Yeah. And it's always sad because they always run and get like milk and like rice, and I'm like, <laughs> so oh, depressed. No candy, no <laughs> chips, no. and they're like, you want candy? And they're like, no, but could I do two another bag of beans? And they're like, yeah, sure. Yeah, they have like cans of soup and a gallon of water. And they're like, ah oh, man, That's so depressing. <laughs> <sighs> You don't even go to the meat section. Get a bunch of steaks, dude. <laughs> Bring home a bunch of steaks. You'll be a neighborhood hero. <laughs> Tonight, we eat like kings. 30 yeah, of us are splitting a New York strip. Yeah, they're, they're fucking... Those guys are nice guys, though. They're doing a lot. Real nice people. guys, yeah. And, you know, it doesn't matter that they're probably making tens of thousands of dollars a month from YouTube revenue. But, you know... Yeah, but they, you know... I think that... Those Doritos $50, are enough. $50 giveaways... I think it evens out. Yeah. I think it evens out. I would rather have YouTuber. <laughs> I would rather have TikToking bodega run guys, guys yeah. around the bodega who are giving away free snacks. Yeah. Than dudes who are doing neither. Who are taking it from kids. Guys who are making the kids pay have no social media presence. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you, 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 are you talking about every Lazy business? Fucks. Every other business <laughs> other Lazy than these fucks. guys? How many TikTok followers do you have, dude? Uh, yeah, you're just talking about every other business that exists in the country. Yeah, those pieces of shit not giving anything away to f- kids for free. Oh uh, yeah, you're, this laundromat's been in your family's for family for fucking four generations. Let's see what are you doing on Instagram Reels, dude? <laughs> you on Twitch? You got a YouTube? Yeah, yeah Paul's laundromat. <laughs> we just watch the chicks put their underwear uh, into the dryers. Yeah, this guy's giving back to the community. It's on OnlyFans. Yeah. 
dude. Oh my god, dude. That's wild. Well, dude, we're at an hour already, hey. man. That was uh, that was a good episode. Was Thanks great. for doing it with Thanks me. Tell the me. people where they can find you. Just listen to my podcast, Rough Week. Watch it on YouTube, Rough Week podcast. Rough Week. We've had some. Subscribe uh, to the Patreon. Subscribe to our Patreon, Rough Week. You get two bonus episodes every week. Three hours a week. Three I mean. Week, dude. Phew, if you thought this was fun, I mean, and you want to listen to Luke for three hours a week. A lot of yapping. But get, get in your there, money's worth, baby. Dude. Yeah. And, dude, you can find me at Dylan Krasinski on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And at Troublemakers on all those sites. We post clips a few times a week. Uh, we're back every Wednesday. Go follow Luke. And we'll see you next week, baby. Good night.